Oh, good. We're going chasing. Hello, dear, and welcome to... We're going chasing. Hello, now, and welcome to... We're going chasing. Now, we have a lot on the agenda, lads, so we'll cut the chase and get straight down to the business. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of We're Going Chase. We had our preview for the 26th up yesterday, and we're back with our preview for the 27th here today. Uh, we've got most of the declaration, certainly for Ireland. Ireland, uh, everything is set in stone, and we've got all the jockeys and that. Uh, so we've got a very good steer on things, um, and there's also prices for a lot of races as well, Killian. Yeah, that's a that's a huge boost in fairness because it's hard sometimes to go without the the declarations, even though you do have a fair idea of what's running. But uh, it's it's always good to have them, and especially the prices as a backup as well. Yeah, well, we're going to look at Leopardstown, Limerick, Kempton, and Chepstow in that order. Um, so we started off with the ten past one at Leopardstown, the Paddy uh, Rewards Club Chase, a Grade One Captain Guinness, multiple uh, graded winner, but never won a Grade One. Is top of the market at five to four. Dino Blue fifteen to eight uh, for Willie Mullins, one of four Willie Mullins horses in the race. Gentleman to me, Dysart Dynamo, and Saint Saint Roy. Um, are the other three. Uh, Dysart Dynamo was well taken care of by Captain Guinness last time out uh, in receipt uh, of a lot of weight. So you'd imagine he would be of no danger to the favourite. St. Roy, Roy is uh, of similar sort of, he's, he's not to the same level. But uh, Dino Blue and Gentleman to me um, could prove troublesome, Killian. Yeah, they're they're the dangers really. I think it's it's especially Dino Blue. Um, she's, she's a very good mare and uh, in receipt of the seven pounds here, I think she she'll be she'll be his main danger. I think, gentleman to me is uh, he's a strange horse, really, isn't he? Um, like his best form all seems to come in the spring, so you maybe just sort of keep an eye out for him for the the two mile Grade One at um the Dublin Chase at the Dublin Racing Festival might be his target as opposed to this. Uh, then Dysart Dynamo is not a Grade One horse, and neither is San Roy. I'd say. JP is probably lining up some sort of handicap with San Roy maybe. Um but yeah, I think it's a savage chance for Captain Guinness. He was unreal in Avon um when he won the four three chase and I think a, a replication of that it'd go very close to winning this. Um and hopefully he does because he's been he's been luckless really for for years going back to the Supreme, like he was absolutely tanking in that mm. when that elixir de nuts brought him down. Um yeah. And he was going to run a huge race that day. And I think it took him a while to get into the swing of things over fences. But last season, he, he really came into his own. He was he won the 4-3 and he was he was second in three grade ones. Um, so that was an unbelievable season for him. And um, yeah, hopefully he finally gets the grade one now that he he well deserves. Yeah, yeah, he, he does deserve it. Um, I see gentlemen to me, if he's on a going day, he's, he's a big danger. Uh, I know he is a sort of spring horse, but... Have nice ground there, uh, yielding. Uh, Leperstown is always nice ground early at Christmas. Uh, while he was well bet in the race last year, um, you know, if he was on a going day, he'd he'd be the main danger. Um, looking at the Paddy Power Future Champions Novice Hurdle, then we've down memory lane in the JP McManus colors, uh, for Gordon Elliott with Derek O'Connor taking the ride, favored at six to four, Daddy Longlegs three to one. Um and then we've got the likes of Absurd and Predators Gold a bit further down the market um at about ten to one. Predators Gold Killian um was one that I quite liked. Uh, I really liked the way he won uh first time out there in Punchestown. Bet Mossy Fen Park is a horse I know you quite like by six lengths. And that was over two miles, three furlongs, and I expected him to step up in trip, to be honest. I'm surprised to see him uh going down in trip. Um, you know, so at ten to one, he's possibly in each way bet. But uh I'd probably be more so looking at the top of the market and looking at what Daddy Longlegs did in Torless uh on very similar ground. Again, Torless he always a nice ground there. And uh he, he put a, a decent field to the sword really and did it very nicely. Um and that's probably where my where my eye would be drawn in the race. Yeah, I know we were talking off off camera about Predators Gold and I was saying like the the rating of the race, race and post rating wise and et cetera, wasn't wasn't too high. And I'd say I was sort of thinking then I was like, why is he going back and trip? Because he doesn't look like a, a two miler to me or didn't on, on that day anyway. And I was thinking back to, to Gallop and Deshaun Pius was running over two miles and eventually when he was stepped up, he ended up 
being a two and a half, three mile horse, obviously won a gold cup. But I was thinking the same of Predator's goal. Maybe the Willie has an eye on a Martin Pipe with him and he can run him down the field here. He's obviously second string to Daddy Longlegs, who's, I'd say, a very, very good horse. Um, So you're looking then saying, OK, he could he might have two more runs then he could run before the DRF or and the DRF then and he could be one for for Martin Pipe you need the four runs now to get in um, and you wouldn't be surprised him going back up and trip like you'd, you'd see it coming a mile away like but he, he could just be laying one out for it yeah um, and also just on that the race and post can be very poor with some of their prices I, I said Daddy Langley's at 3-1 to one. he's 7-4 to four really he's actually 9-4 to four at Bet365 um, I was thinking 3-1 to one was, was too big but uh, I actually reckon at 9-4 to four, he's uh, he's quite a good bet yeah uh, I'd, I'd probably I'd, I'd, I'd expect them to beat down memory lane to be honest based on what we've seen from both of them so far I think uh, his race at Turles was was the most impressive performance we've seen in this field yeah, I I agree with you. Yeah, I think what he what he what he did to a good garden horse and an Irish Panther as well. It was, it was it was a fair demolition now. Um, and as you said, the ground would be similar enough that that the ground you're going to get in Thurles is um is going to be similar to what you got, what you're going to get to on the twenty seventh in Leperstown and like that farm tying in the Irish Panther farm line with Farron Glory, the Royal Bond winner. I know we said it probably wasn't a vintage Royal Bond, but it's still a Grade One farm there. Um. So that that's interesting too. Yeah, I, I I find it hard to split the two of them to be honest. Um I'd probably go with Daddy Longlegs though. Um yeah. just just think that like uh, Derek O'Connor is a very capable rider, but it's probably it's a slight negative that he's on this and I know they're probably saying, Oh, he's ro- rode him rode him in all three races so far, but um I, I don't know. I just think maybe uh, I go with Daddy Longlegs just the bigger price and I think he, he was more impressive on debut as well. Yeah, uh, so we're both in agreement there on that one. We've got the Paddy Power Chase then at three o'clock. <clears throat> and for me, it's one of my, it's probably my favourite race of the year, Barrier the Supreme, possibly. Um, but uh, it's just full of chaos. Um, it can throw up anything. You can throw up great finishes, drama, the whole lot. And 10 minutes before it, you've got the Welsh Grand National, which is just a pure slog, a complete test of stamina, which is great to watch too. It's a great 20 minutes of uh, National Hunt racing. But uh, the Paddy Power Chase, I spent quite a bit of time looking at this. Um, and Max Charm is there, a horse that I've got in my tent to follow, a horse I really do like. I believe that he's on an upward curve, pulled up last time at Navin. Um, I'd overlooked that. It was clear before the race from the trainer's comments that uh, he would need to run. Now, he'd probably surprise me if he was going to go and win on this ground at Leopardstown. I think he probably likes it a bit softer. Um, And possibly looking at maybe something in Gore in there early next year for him, uh, for win purposes. But a small bit further down the betting, uh, Bustleton is 33 to 1. And I'll, I'll check this price just to confirm that it's right. But I do quite like him. Uh, I really liked him for the Fairy House uh, Grand National last year and then just a load of rain came and uh, it just wasn't suitable for him at all. Uh, and he was pulled up that day. Uh, and then Killarney, I'd say just Fairy House took its toll on him. He was out in a month's time in Killarney over a trip to a short firm uh, and was well bet as well. But the form that really catches my eye, I suppose you're probably going back a bit further, he won uh the Kerry National uh last September, uh won that quite well and then went on to Newbury, which is my favorite piece of farm to be honest. Um, if you just go to that race at Newbury, uh Lemilos remastered, Jericho Rock, and Cora Grambler were all ahead of him that day, and he was bet sixteen lengths, which isn't bad in a in a big handicap like that when he's fifth. But all of those horses, if you go out and look at what they did since, um, you know, that piece of farm looks particularly strong. Um, and then everything since then, you'd sort of forgive them. Um, you know, there's reasons for different bits and pieces. On a season reappearance, he ran over hurdles in the list model and hurdle, uh, which he was never, he was 50 to 1 for it. He never had any chance but it was a lovely pipe opener for this. The ground will suit him. He's a big price. I think he is a, a, a great bet, um, to be honest with you, Killian, at 33 to 1. Um, was there anything there yourself that, uh, that really caught your eye? 
Yeah, there's 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 two, um, unfortunately. So uh, bear with me here a second. Uh the first one is uh, Am I right for Henry de Bromhead? Um I think he's I think a mark of 138 is probably I think might be lenient enough for him. Um he went off favourite in the Irish national last year and as we know we've spoke about the race plenty of times, like there's only five or six finishers, it was a complete mess. Uh ground was completely against him. But if you go back to his form over fences, um one is beginners over over two and a half miles in Fairy House, stepped into the Florida Pearl then and got beaten, but but jumped very, very poorly that day, really. Um and then he'd he'd a good run behind uh, the Devil's Coachman in, in a grade three at Navin and Ramillas there. Um and I think I don't know, just stepping into handicaps, he had obviously that that Irish national, he was he was well fancied and he was a bit a big real plundered in that, but he was over in Cheltenham in October and got beaten behind a stable companion again, travelled really well throughout the race and just I think the saddle slipped um at three or four out and it sort of it sort of finished his chances there. But um like if you look at the way he travelled, he he looked really well in the race and I assume he'd come on for the run as well. But he's about a fourteen to one chance there. Uh, I think he's he's the stable's number one hope in this race and they've they've a good record in it as well. So uh, that's the first one. And second one then is is Fakir Delen for uh, Gordon Elliott. Um, probably would prefer if there was a small bit more cut in the ground but he's got some really good form in, in bigger handicaps he was fourth in the Kim Muir behind Shambard in, in 2022 and then last time out he was third to Cocoa Beach in the Tritown off, off a big price that day too he's 28 to 1 but I think he just He's a horse that I think is definitely well capable of of being better than his mark of one hundred and forty two, but uh, he was off a big break when he when he did run in a in a point to point in October, and that obviously set him up nicely for the for the Tri Town, and and I think Danny Gilligan taking off five here. Obviously, Coco Beach has come out since the Tri Town, and and Frank that farm as well, uh, by by running such a good race off off a huge weight in the in the Beecher over at Aintree, so. I don't know. I just think uh, he's about fourteen to one. I'd be disappointed if he wasn't making the frame anyway. Like he's he's an eight year old, but he's he's very lightly raced. He's only had fourteen runs and and only only seven runs over fences, and they've been well spaced out over the last sort of three seasons. So, um, he is lightly raced, and I think he's got a nice chance. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, while you were speaking there, I was just checking the prices there on odds checker. And Bustleton is thirty three to one with Bet three six five, and he's twenty five to one a lot of places. But like he's fourteen, uh, that's only uni bet. Yeah, he's pretty much he's twenty five to one, uh, pretty much everywhere. Thirty three is Bet three six five. Bet three six five. We give you six places as well. So um, yeah, and they're nearly yeah, the that. standout price on every horse in the race. Yeah, that uh, that is a that is a very good bet. Happy and, Christmas um, from Denise. Happy Christmas, and in fact, the Paddy Power Chase. I think I had two huge price place horses last year. If we check the result of that, um, there was a 33 to 1, a 40 to 1 shot I think I had up. Um, but anyway, we'll move on to just loop back around uh, very briefly. The 1235, obviously Marie Nationale, uh, last year's supreme winner. Um, you know, great to see him back out over fences. Uh, it's been long overdue, really. It's a pity we haven't seen him before this. But uh, we're seeing him now on nice ground, and uh, please God, he hacks up. Yeah, I I hope he batters them, um, because we we need him, because like you, you saw the state of the, the race and post novice race as four runners. You 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 reckon Charger could come second? Like that's not good. If Charger yeah. comes second, we're in serious trouble in the two mile division. It's already weak enough as it is outside of a couple of nice horses like your El Fabiolos, John Bonds. You might have a Captain Guinness and a Dino Blue, but. Aside from those types like gentlemen to me when he was running well, like there's there's nothing there. And we, we need we need Marine National to become a superstar from over fences and hopefully he, he should beat these handy and hopefully he batters them. Mm. Uh and then at the two twenty, uh we've got a two mile handicap hurdle. Uh we've got about fourteen runners there, I think it is, but uh Nuzret for Joseph O'Brien and another Joseph Ars, you could have a great day. Uh, there at Leopardstown if uh, if I'm right but I think that he's got a nice chance there too if you're looking back at some of his form last year um, towards the the end of last season he was bet eight lengths by Lossie Mout 
Um, you know, Nazareth is rated 139. Last team out is rated. Oh, the internet's gone. It's about. Last team out is rated 147. Um, so not much in that at all, actually. But uh, Zarek the Brave is there too. And the his most recent piece of form there behind Risk Bell uh, also reads. Uh, quite nicely um wouldn't be a, a huge strong fancy but if i was to pick one in the race uh nosret would, would be for me killian did you have anything in that race no i think it, i know Encanto bruno was a horse you liked after cheltenham but mm. he's, he's stepping into handicaps after being really disappointing in, in the royal bond and i think he's his goose as a grade one horse now is probably cooked but um the uh one horse I was looking at that was really well ran really well in Navin when he was favourite in the uh, two mile uh, hurdle race there, uh, Fortune de Fortuna, the ex uh, Gretsch horse, um that's with Gordon Elliott um they, he improved his his form by a lot when he when he won that day in Navin and just wonder maybe they've they've might have figured him out and he maybe he prefer a bit more cut in the ground but a uh, horse that sort of. He's very lightly raced as well. He's still only a six-year-old. He's only had seven or eight runs, eight runs over over hurdles, and um, two of those were for David Bridgewater over in England as well. So you can you can forget about that. Mm. But uh, yeah, I think maybe he might. It's gone up another nine pounds, but um, yeah, he might he might run well. Yeah, um, he he could do. And in Canto Bruno, just going back to him, the one thing that sort of has put me if not even the last run it's just opening rating of 140 I don't think for what he's achieved um, I don't think that's obviously uh, well in or anything like that um, you know so be happy enough to, to leave him go and if he wins he wins um, I'd like to see his jump and improve back to what, what he was like at Cheltenham yeah brilliantly it's, it's very Cheltenham. poor um, I see there that uh, Joy Sheridan the, it's a group one winning rider on the flat he's riding as a fanion for um, Dennis Hogan he actually mm. rode him the last day when he ran over hurdles as well in a uh, in Thurles. He was beaten by um by Pack and Rock there last week, but um yeah that was his first ever run over hurdles or ride over hurdles. So he's he's riding Zafani and again I don't know what it, is he going. He's been riding in Dundalk, but um I don't know if he's taken out and jump like he's going proper jumping. He's a good rider. Yeah, uh we'll move on to Limerick then. Uh, there's not too much uh to talk about here, Killian. Uh, Harmonia Maker is going to be favourite for the Mayor's Chase. Uh, won very nicely on debut, beating um a nice horse of Willie Mullins as there, and was bet thir- by a thirty three to one shot silent approach at Cork, um in what was quite an upset, but a great ride by Danny Mullins that day. Uh, Zenta was back in third. Really, um, like Harmonia Maker, if you're going back looking at her form, uh, behind Brandy Love. Like that should be the key piece of form in this race, and that should be if she can bring that again, she'll be winning. Yeah, I she's going like she she's going to be a real odds on shot, and she's absolutely holes up. I'd say like hot to wear. I I can't see her reversing the form with with Hermione Maker at all. Um, I think she's she's one that I don't know what price she's going to be, but I assume four to six, four to seven, and um, yeah. she should be winning that comfortably. I'd say. Yeah, uh, and then also at Limerick there as well, it'll just be interesting to see the 202, just to flag it with you, it's probably gone under the radar a small bit, but Noble Yates running over hurdles uh, over two mile four furlongs. Um, you know, God, God knows uh, what sort of Noble Yates have turned up over that sort of a trip over hurdles. But yeah, just... Um, so much better than, than all of those though. But I think Noble Yates, like, I wouldn't say he's... he's he, In this sort of company, he wouldn't be that slow, like. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'd say not. Um, but uh, we'll move on from Limerick there and we look at Kempton. Uh, first of all, we've got the 155, the wayward lad, novices chase, a grade two, Master Chewy is seven to four. Um, Nickelback is five to two. One horse that I quite liked there was uh, Petit Tonnerre, Killian. Um, I taught his last run at Sandown when he was bet nine lengths by La Patron. Now, while it is while it was a quite a poor race, um, to be honest with you, for a grade one, I just felt that he was handled quite tenderly, and you just be wondering what the plan is for him down the line, whether it's uh in Kempton on the twenty seventh, I'm not sure, but uh, I'd just be looking at the market really, and I'd be keeping him in mind, um, because I I did quite like the look of that run, 
um last time out. Was there anything there in that race yourself? Yeah, I think Master Chewy being favoured for this says a lot about we we spoke about two mile division being weak and you know it's it's not there aren't too many top two milers around anymore and everyone seems to want to stay in horse. But um Master Chewy being six to four favourite for this tells its own story. Like he's as ungenuine as it comes. Um I'd be definitely taking him on. I just might just lay him. But uh, Nickelback, I know you, you're a big fan of Hermes Allen and Nickelback was second to him, uh, beating, beating six and a half lengths uh, the last time out uh, in, in Newbury in the grade two. And like, he's a horse stepping back to two miles. Like he's, he's a front runner. So like if he got, if he got into a good rhythm on the front jumping, uh, I think he'd have, he'd have a good chance to be honest. Hmm. Okay. But it's a real pity the Venetia William horse uh, Jello, um, he's a he's been a fair improver over fences now. Uh, he he won really well the last day over two and a half miles in Ascot, and um, if he'd ran here, I'd I'd really fancy him. But uh, he's he's obviously ran the other day, so he won't be turning up again. Yeah, and speaking of real improver over fences, uh, Boot Hill is a horse uh, who really fits that profile. Who's running in the two thirty at Kempton in the Desert Orchid Chase. Um again you've a lot of horses there towards uh the top of the way it's it's sort of quite condensed we'll say between the top three or four anyway like editor de Geet 159 boot hill 158 first flow haddocks to the bow 157 um i don't know if he's going i think he is actually i don't uh, think haddocks to the bow is running you don't think so no i don't think it's, so no. it's mad racing post has a jockey down beside it um, yeah you know it's a, it's a lot easier to figure out what's actually declared i know yeah yeah, uh, than what it is in the UK yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah he's not going but there's a lot of horses there rated in the high 150s and it's almost like a quite a condensed handicap Um, not one I have a really strong opinion on Um, editor to Geet I'd nearly side with him at, at 10 to 1 if that price is correct but yeah would he win a handicap that, off 159 I, I'd say he could do yeah I, well, like, considering that, like, I don't think there's anything there down towards the bottom of the way. It's like Grange Walk, Warlord. Um, you know, I wouldn't be gone on a lot of them. I think it nearly turned into who's the best horse, and he probably is the best horse. Um, you know, so but it's it's not a race I've I've a strong opinion on. Um, no, that's fair enough. Um, yeah, I think it's an interesting John Ryan, the rare raider to England with Grange Walk, the little Yank runs and the three oh nine as well. So. Um, I'd say I'd say the two of them they're, they're just keeping each other company going over on the on the boat. Um, yeah, of the two of them, I'd say Little Yank probably has a better chance. I wouldn't really fancy Grange Walk. Um, in in that race, I think Boot Hill is still improving. Um, and I think it'd be, it'd be dangerous to to go against him. To be honest. Hmm. Um, and then we will look at Chepstow finally. Uh, and that'll wrap things up. We've got the one forty. I thought it was interesting that El Dorado Allen. Um, is turning up over hurdles. He hasn't been seen over hurdles since March 2020 when he was bet 45 lengths in the county hurdle. But uh, he, was a, he was a good hurdler. Um, you know, he had nice form there at Sandown too. And obviously he's proved to be a better horse um, over fences. He rate 153 over fences, 143 over hurdles. Um, and he's just a, an interesting runner to keep an eye on. One that uh that could be relatively well in considering he hasn't run over hurdles and has improved as a horse since he has run over hurdles. Um but then you've got the two de- the two ten uh the juvenile hurdle for that road five to two one harsh being sent over for Joseph O'Brien uh seven to two. It's probably a race that Burdett Road should be winning quite handily, Killian, is it? Yeah, geez, if he doesn't win it, they like they might as well forget about it, uh, the English because like he was so impressive when he won at Cheltenham and like Harsh was beaten hammered be twenty lengths nearly by by Mighty Bandit in a maiden hurdle and then he won a non event down in Cork. But like he's he's not a he'd be a Fred Winter horse, like he's not going to be capable of lining up in the triumph. So like if Burnett Road can't beat him, it'll be like last year. The first ten home in the triumph last year were Irish. I think England only had three runners, two were Ben Pauling and one for Gary Moore. And like they were all they were all well beaten and it'll be something similar again this year if Burnett Road doesn't win because everyone will say we'll just go to the Fred Winter and run the handicap instead. Hmm. And then Killian, on to our final race. Uh we've got the Carl Welch. Grand National Handicap. 
uh, another great race, as we mentioned, a complete test of stamina. One thing that I've just noticed, well, I noticed early on when I was going through the race, that's quite unusual, is the going is good to soft. Now, if there was ever a clear indication of global warming, <laughs> Chepstow uh, being good to soft uh, for the Welsh Grand National is uh, is probably it. But uh, we won't get too bogged down about that because there's nothing myself or yourself are going to do really to, to stop global warming. Um, but what we can do is we can try and pick the winner of the Welsh Grand National. Um, and I know you quite like one there towards the top of the market. Um, I actually think the ground, like usually when you're looking at this race, you're just looking for something that's a complete stare, loves heavy ground, um, you know, and just a real big bastard. But uh, it's made it, things a small bit more complicated um, having the ground uh, good to soft. Um, I'm not sure what the forecast is like, but I don't know if it's going to change too drastically. Um, but it's made things a bit more complicated. And one that I probably like is the big breakaway. Uh, so he ran in this race last year, obviously, and he was second to the two amigos. Um, now he's down in the weights a bit this year. Uh, he's actually running three pounds out of the handicap, which isn't ideal. Um, so he's on a similar weight, down a pound, I think, uh, from last year. But uh, he has form on good to soft ground, which a lot of these horses don't. Um, he's got form around the course. He likes it here. Um, I do really like him, and I liked him anti post before he ran at entry in the beacher. The beacher would slightly put me off him. It's a bit of a black mark. He was pulled up. Um, uh, and that's only on the 9th of December so a couple of weeks ago Um, but the only thing I'd say on that is that maybe he just didn't like the fences and that you know he fell in the in the entry grand national too um, and maybe it's just a course thing for him he was pulled up three from home so if that hasn't left a mark on him um, I'd give him a very good shout here to be honest and uh, that's that's who I go for Um, having gone through the field uh, something at a price there, fourteen to one. Uh, the big breakaway each way, I I'd say, will be there thereabouts. Yeah, I I was looking through it, and I, I think the favourite will take a lot of beating. He's a, he's an up and coming, improving horse, but I probably go with um, I will do it for Sam Thomas. Uh, he won the race in twenty twenty one by nine lengths. Uh, was off a a full year break then until last January when he won the won a hand a premier handicap over at Warwick, beating Mister Incredible. Um, uh, follow that up with a, with a poor run really in the the Midlands National in Utoxeter, um, and he's been left off then until November when he ran the Bertemps qualifier, uh, at Aintree off a mark of one hundred and forty over hurdles and stayed on really well there, um, and ended up coming second, um, so that's a nice pipe opener for this. His mark of one hundred and fifty three over fences, um, Dylan Johnson seven pound claimer is going to ride him as well, I think he's. He should definitely, he can do it on good ground, good to soft. He can do it on the heavy stuff as well. He's a real nice horse. And that seven pound that's been taken off the top weight is going to be a massive help to him as well. I'd say he should be disappointed if he wasn't hitting the frame now. Okay, okay. Uh, very fair. Killian, so just to wrap it up, we will go with our best bets for the 27th of December. Um, I go first with one of mine. I'm going to go with Daddy Longlegs at nine to four, uh, to win the one forty five at Leopardstown. Um, he'd be my first one. Yeah, I've uh, Captain Guinness in the the great one. Um, okay, ten past one, five to four shot. Five. To, okay, yeah, five to four shot. Very good. Um, and then secondly, I think Bustleton at thirty three to one in the Paddy Power Chase three o'clock at Leopardstown is a a stonking bet. To be honest, the more I look at it, the more I like it. Yeah, I have a uh, nickel back in the wayward lad. Um, I think he's five to two. Okay, okay, it's Master Chewy. Uh, are you happy enough to leave it there? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, very good, lads. Thanks very much for listening to us. Um, and the very best of luck uh, with whatever you do. Happy Christmas to you, and thanks very much uh, for listening to us throughout the year and for engaging with our content. We do appreciate it. Um, so until after Christmas, that's all from us, lads, and we'll see you then. Thank you. Bye. That's how they start the